Friday, March 16th, 2018, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So it's uh, seven, just gone past 7 a.m. London. I'm going to look at the markets as usual. And I want to talk about a book called Pawns in the Game by William Guy Carr. He used to be a Canadian uh, naval officer, Royal Canadian Navy. And I think it's very appropriate to talk about it uh, in our present uh, geopolitical uh, you know, atmosphere or geopolitical environment, if you want to call it that. So, um, yeah, markets are still uh, in consolidation mode. Uh, it seems to be everywhere. Stock market currencies, uh, cryptocurrencies, precious metals. Uh, so, where are we then? Uh, spot gold this morning, uh, 13.18, up about $2.00. The range has been 1313 or 1314 to 1319. So very narrow range there. Uh, silver 1644 up about five cents. Range has been 1635 to 1647. So yeah, precious metals still um, in a funk in the short term. As I said yesterday uh, in my uh, video, longer term it still looks very good. If we, you know, look uh, at the forest, so to speak, instead of looking at each uh, tree individually, it looks like uh, gold and silver are actually set up to move a lot higher. Um, when? Difficult to say. Um, so, what about the stock market? Yesterday was a strange day. I saw the Dow finished up, but uh, S&P and NASDAQ were weaker. Uh, right now, the Dow is uh, uh, down 10 points at 24,866. Uh, S&P is up a point and a half at 2749. Uh, these are all the futures, of course. Uh, the uh, NASDAQ future is up five at 7,036. Currency-wise, well, yeah, as I said, you know, still consolidating. I've been looking at a few charts here this morning. Uh, I'm not going to show it to you because I want it to be a quick quicker video in the making when I have to do my uh, put the charts in the videos I have to edit them it takes a while I want to publish the video um, but uh, you know dollar index still stuck around that 90 level uh, right now but uh, no direction um, the only you know the dollar yen's looking interesting uh, the dollar is weaker here against the yen uh, and uh, since the beginning of the year, uh, you know, we had a, a we had a big drop from around, let's say, 113 uh, to a recent low, which was uh, beginning of March, uh, just above 105, like 105.30. And then, you know, but we've been consolidating choppy, choppy, choppy. It looks like we're forming a flag before we move lower uh, in the dollar uh, versus the Japanese yen. And that's positive for precious metals, um, and that's, uh, you know, negative for the dollar. It will be interesting to see how the other major currencies like the euro and sterling do. But uh, it looks to me that, the, yeah, the dollar uh, is still hasn't seen, you know, um, it's going to see new lows. Uh, and, though you know, I know this uh, new clown, what's his name, uh, Larry Kudlow, uh, you know, talking about King Dollar, you know, better than anything, you know, he, I think he's just, it's just bluster, uh, just like his boss, in my opinion. Uh, the world is kind of going crazy at the moment. Um, so it, I think we've got loads of distractions, but I'll come to that later. Um, so where are we this morning in the currencies? Uh, Price wise, well, sterling 139.44 up six uh, pips or 0.05 of a, per of a percent. The uh, euro is uh, up uh, 0.12 percent at 123.20. Yeah, and the dollar is down half a percent uh, against the yen at 105.84. So uh, the key level here for the dollar yen is going to be. One, around 105.30, you know, if we drop below there and, you know, see a 104 figure, that won't be good. 
Uh, bond market, 10 year yield is at 282. So it's still under control. Uh, we and now the, the really big level is 3%. I remember, you know, when I was covering at that 360, 263 level, that was really important. It took a long time to break through that one. Um, so um, I'm sure a lot of you have, especially in the UK, not too sure about the US, have been following the recent developments geopolitically between the UK, Russia. Um, I saw yesterday also the at the UN Security Council, um, you know, the different ambassadors, the UK, US, Russian ambassador talking. It was good theater, and that's what I think it is. Um, so, yeah, I, I think these guys are all uh, in it together, <coughs> and it's and they're distracting the public from the bigger problem, which is uh, financial, economic, monetary, and... Uh, yeah, and they want to keep us uh, scared about, uh, you know, the, the situation in the world, you know, in the U.S., uh, you know, Middle East, Syria, uh, Ukraine, uh, North Korea, Russia and the U.K. And I think it's all just a, a game, you know, a chess game. And uh, they need to keep us distracted. And that's why... Uh, you know, I've read this book a few times, Pawns in the Game. I recommend it. There might be a PDF. There might not be a PDF. Uh, it's uh, not a particularly long book, under 200 uh, pages. And basically, uh, he was a Canadian uh, naval Royal Navy officer of World War I, William Guy Carr. And uh, he talks about the World Revolutionary Movement. <laughs> And how the people in charge of the monetary system, uh, the people in charge of the world, you know, the behind the scenes like Woodrow Wilson also discovered, you know, uh, he made that comment that, uh, you know, uh, one dare not speak above his breath about the real people in charge. Uh, and he was president of the United States, uh, basically saying that uh, they just play us. Uh, you know, where are the pawns? They just play us and then uh, they do things that are necessary to gain more and more control. And that their objective is to have global domination, I guess, like the New World Order. But I recommend it. And I think, um, you know, this stuff all going on geopolitically is, is, is that. Uh, I hope that uh, it doesn't come to a, like a kinetic nuclear war because that wouldn't be good for for anyone um, I hope they're distracting us from a major uh, you know financial uh, event uh, and I think it's the latter uh, why well because countries like uh, that are big creditors to the uh, US they're realizing that the US is never gonna you know pay off their debts and if anything they're gonna this debt <clears throat> excuse me the debt snowball is uh, continuing uh, um, under, it doesn't matter what president, it doesn't matter if it's uh, Obama, Bush, Trump, or the next one. Uh, the debt never seems to, uh, to stop. Um, you know, uh, this new, uh, t but, you know, new tax plan by Trump, I think is the, uh, you know, the trigger because it's going to... Uh, increase uh, the deficits even more which is going to create even more debt and uh, I, I and I don't blame and I think you know uh, Russia and China uh, they're doing this because they know what's going to happen they want to protect uh, you know themselves they don't want to be holding the bag of uh, paper dollars so we could see a rush uh, to to the uh, exit door uh, and will the Fed help? No, I don't think the Fed will help. There's an interesting article, um, you know, on Zero Hedge today by Brandon Smith uh, from alt-market.com. And he says, the Fed has its finger on the button of a nuclear debt bomb. He says, you know, they're not going to try to save, uh, you know, the, the system, uh, the central bankers, because uh, the people uh, behind the central bankers they benefit from it. They want to see 
uh, you know, look at how they benefit. They almost brought the system down in 08, the bankers. They were the ones who propagated that bubble. And what happened? <laughs> They've been the biggest benefactors of that collapse, even though they almost went out of business. They had to be bailed out. And I'm sure they, they have a plan, uh, you know, for, for the next, uh, you know, implosion. So that's what I think is happening. Uh, I wouldn't lose sleep over uh, a nuclear uh, nuclear Armageddon, so to speak. I'd be more. Uh, I'd keep uh, my eye on the ball, on the money, and I, I'd uh, keep uh, my hands tight, hold on tight to your physical uh, silver and gold. Um, keep your cryptocurrencies. Blockchain has a lot of future. I think. Uh, someone said, oh, you haven't been talking about cryptocurrencies. Uh, well, you know, they, they haven't really been doing much either. They've been consolidating and uh, some of them have dropped quite a bit. But uh, I think they still have a bright future. As I said, not all of them uh, will do well. Some of them will disappear. But uh, just uh, have, you know, different. Just have just put them aside in your hard wallet and forget about them. And then maybe next year, check them out and see how they've done and just try to keep accumulating. That's uh, what I see as a best strategy. Um, precious metals mining stocks, they're frustrating as well, but I think they will do well. So do the same as with uh, cryptocurrencies. They're speculative. Uh, yeah, and, and that's it. So... Um, I'll uh, put the link uh, below in the description for this uh, Zero Hedge uh, article so you can have a look. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on steamit.com and on Twitter. I'll talk to you later. Bye.